The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As the sun wakens us earlier in the day and stays up past the evening meal, we realize the seasons are changing. Soon, many will begin to engage in an annual spring cleaning. For some, the practices of Lent, self-examination, penitence, prayer, fasting and almsgiving, reading and meditating on the Word of God, can also feel like a kind of spring cleaning, an opportunity to reflect on who we are as people of faith and how we want to embody that faith. In these activities, we create space for transformation. As we continue to explore authentic expressions of faith, let us pray. We have wounded your love. O oh God, heal us. We stumble in the darkness. Light of the world, transfigure us. We forget that we are your home. Spirit of God, dwell in us. Eternal Spirit, living God, in whom we live and move and have our being, all that we are, have been, and shall be, is known to you. In the very secret of our hearts, you know all that rises to trouble us. Living flame, burn into us. Cleansing wind, blow through us. Fountain of water, well up within us, that we may love and praise in deed and in truth. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to Jesus, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of Christ. Well, that was harsh. Can you imagine going to worship on Sunday and having Jesus show up, totally trash the place? and tell you that you're doing it wrong. To be clear, this is essentially what is happening in this passage. The Jewish people were going to worship and following all the rules and traditions that had been part of their worship life for as long as anyone could remember. Those selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers, they served a purpose in line with the law as they understood it. The animals were offered as sacrifices. Money was changed to avoid unholy images on coins and the contributions to the synagogue. Everything had been set up according to how worship was understood. The people thought they were doing everything right. And yet, Jesus got angry, really angry. 
throwing things around and wrecking the place. Angry. It's almost a year since we have been able to go to worship, following the rules and traditions that have been part of our worship life for as long as we can remember. We've long assumed that we've been doing everything right. Our experiences of Sunday morning worship have been meaningful. We have a family of faith that we value. We contribute from the gifts we are given to sustain our church buildings and ministries. Everything has a function according to how we understand worship and faith. The time away from these practices can feel as jarring as Jesus showing up and trashing the place. Both moments, however, offer an opportunity to look past what is familiar and comfortable. Both serve as potential transition points in the life of faith that challenge us to consider a different road. Stop making my father's house a market place. It is said that the first step to recovery is to recognize that there is a problem. The anger of Jesus in this story sends a powerful message that echoes what has been told by the prophets throughout history. Marketplace systems are often exploited for personal gain that is inconsistent with a faith that calls us to love God and love neighbor. Jesus reinforces that there's a better way. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. Faith was never meant to be a commodity that is purchased. The rights to participate in worship are not bought through personal worth. Rigid adherence to practices and traditions without reflection and engagement can leave our actions hollow. All things, books, sacred objects, even buildings, can be destroyed. In the end, what matters? What needs to be built up are the ways in which we embody what we have learned from the body of Christ. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus are one too true Savior and Lord. Some may have noticed the post on our Facebook page and group saying nothing should go back to normal. Normal wasn't working. If we go back to the way things were, we will have lost the lesson. May we rise up and do better. The Christian church was built by those who recognized God in the work of Jesus, including this angry outburst, and sought the healing of transformation. We too have an opportunity to experience profound transformation at this time as we continue to explore ways to nourish our faith beyond what has been familiar and comfortable. We can do better. We can be better. As we seek to live authentically, the faith God calls us to live in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Let us pray as we sing together the canticle of the turning.
let us profess our faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Rely on the promises of God. We pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need responding. Your mercy is great, following. Hear us, O God. There is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church, that your people place their trust in nothing besides you. Your name is holy. Guide your church, that in every situation, your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Give all people the willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislators, judicial systems, the systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering, especially remembering Brittany, Melissa, Virginia, Donald, Tracy and Stephen, Matthew, Jean, Jamie, Doug, Gary, Arla, David, and Dallas. Those strug and those struggling due to COVID and all those we carry in our hearts. Defend victims of crime and bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified. Give clarity to these congregations and our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel, or that serves our own interests. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved. Thank you for all the martyrs whose witness, witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers into one, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Father of mercy, alone we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. When we are discouraged by our weakness, strengthen us to follow Christ, our pattern and our hope, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. 
And may the peace, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, Creator, Redeemer, and life-giving Spirit remain with you and all those you love, now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may you have a wonderful week.